What is the capabilities approach of Amartya Sen's development as freedom? Amartya Sen's capability theory had a significant influence on research discussions of progress and development. Sen's capacity approach emphasizes people and their capabilities rather than products and resources. Amartya Sen's capabilities approach is centered on the idea that people are human beings with emotional and psychological needs and that development is the expansion of people's capabilities. This proposition is enabling. It seeks to improve people's well-being by increasing their skills which are linked to freedom of choice. The existence of diversity and the multifaceted nature of human well-being are expressly acknowledged. The focus is not just on how individuals behave in reality, but also on their capabilities, which are sensible decisions, to attain outcomes that they desire and have reason to value. It defines capacities in terms of the actual freedoms people have, as opposed to accumulating material positions. For grasping the components of human well-being, it offers a comparatively universal grammar. The capability approach gives a structured method for considering problems and analyzing them in the context of people's capabilities. The capability paradigm views poverty as the lack of fundamental capabilities. People may get deprived of such capabilities in several ways, including ignorance, repressive government regulations, a lack of finances, poor health, inadequate education, and family accidents, and so on. This method scope is very broad. Any elements that might have an impact on a person's capacity should be taken into account. All factors that may have an impact on human capabilities, which are the primary indicator of human well-being, are including included in the domain of capability theory, including social and political processes, gender bias, inequality, poverty, all forms of discrimination, social exclusion, disability, environmental conditions, and individual and psychological factors. It is a full-fledged representation of human growth in this sense. The capacity approach places a special emphasis on two things, freedoms to achieve and the capacities to perform. Is sustainable development a practical and feasible goal for nations? What might be some of the difficulties and possible trade-offs? Sustainable development is neither viable nor practical for undeveloped nations. According to the concept of sustainable development, numerous activities that would be impossible for atypical developing nations to have already been completed. We occasionally hear the term sustainable development and used to emphasize our idealized future, which would be devoid of all the issues that Earth's inhabitants face now. Natural resource depletion, gender inequality, wealth disparity are just few but they are correctly represent the problems that we are working to resolve. To create a blueprint to build a better and more sustainable future for all. The United Nations Development Program describes the sustainable development goals as a set of 17 global objectives. Sustainable development is essentially a long-term strategy for planning future without harming the environment. And this ensures that future generations can live in a safe environment as they build their economies, societies, and environmental protections efforts with a similar ideal in mind. It fulfills our needs without obstructing others' chances. Currently, environmental deterioration inhibits economic growth by increasing the cost of healthcare and decreasing productivity, especially in emerging nations. Additionally, every nation requires economic growth to increase its revenue in assets. But environmental deterioration will significantly hinder this nation's ability to experience the necessary economic growth. The improvement of resource productivity, access to clean water and hygienic conditions, quality and equity, as well as improvements in the living conditions of the poor, are all the issues that need to be addressed. However, these issues can only be resolved if environmentally sustainable growth is achieved. In the process of addressing these issues, 
However, new issues have emerged that are impeding the achievement of sustainable development goals. These issues include increased levels of consumption, increased levels of corruption, high rates of suicide, and rapid population growth. These issues put individuals in vulnerable positions, which creates challenges and pressure on the unsustainable use of natural resources. Achieving sustainable development involves making trade-offs, such as reducing the rate of population growth through policies or discipline, investing in agriculture and supporting its cultivation and preservation rather than developing it into commercial lands and subdivisions, and offering a stronger institutional framework and governance. In what ways does poverty lead to environmental degradation and what ways are the poor victims? Specifically, provide two examples of how the poor sometimes degrade the natural resources on which they depend. Why does this happen and what must be done to escape this trap? The primary and most important sustainable development goal is to end poverty in all its manifestations everywhere. Every nation in the world looks forward to end the poverty so that even the most vulnerable and underprivileged people have equitable access to economic resources, wholesome living conditions, and essential infrastructure and technology. Furthermore, there should be no question that the impoverished are more severely vulnerable than the rich to the effects of environmental devastation. The gap between the very rich and the very poor has widened over the past few decades, while ordinary living standards have increased. Inadequate education and ineffective application of poverty eradication strategies at the local level may be one of the causes of poverty. Most frequently, poverty is implicated with environmental deterioration. Poverty striking people tend to squander every resource accessible to them when their survival is at risk due to a lack of eligible resources and a lack of knowledge. However, we frequently overlook the fact that those who are less fortunate are the most vulnerable to the negative effects or consequences of environmental pollution, climate change, and global warming. Everyone needs to understand how poverty and environmental issues are intertwined. The environment is stressed by poverty among humans, whereas the poor suffer greatly as a result of environmental issues. Whether they are wealthy or not, people need to consume food, water, and other natural resources to survive. Natural resources are the foundation of all economic activity, whether it be directly, indirectly, or remotely. Any pressure on natural resources can result in environmental stress. Environmental harm can make it difficult for people particularly the impoverished, to maintain healthy living conditions. The majority of those affected by environmental issues are the poor, since they are more directly dependent on the environment than the wealthy are. The effects of poverty on the environment often include larger families due to the high morality rates and insecurity, improper human waste disposal leading to unhealthy living conditions, increased pressure on fragile land to meet needs, over-exploitation of natural resources, and increase in deforestation. A decrease in crop output and productivity, among other things, might result from inadequate knowledge of agricultural operations. On the other side, environmental issues exacerbate the suffering of the poor, as environmental deterioration enhances the impact of floods and other environmental catastrophes. Environmental problems among them result in greater misery. Inflation is brought on by soil erosion, land degradation, and deforestation, which reduce food supply and make it harder to get wood for the fire. In short, poor people are the ones who suffer the worst economic, social, or effects on their mental or physical health for environmental deterioration. The governments of every nation ought to work harder to end poverty and as a result protect those who are less fortunate from the terrible effects of environmental harm. 
all facets of society should work together more to form a cooperative alliances so that everyone, especially those who live in poverty, is connected to the rest of the world through their active engagement in social, political, and economic sectors as well as environmental regeneration.